Can you really have it all? Can you have an amazing business and tons of money as well as having your free time, your family time, a great relationship and just literally live your dream life? That is what this episode is exploring. So come on in. Let's go and listen to Business Growth Secrets today. And the topic is, can you really have it all? Is it truly possible to have it all, to find time for everything? And I know loads of people that are really successful, that are millionaires, that are celebrities, that are successful in their businesses. They all run their lives from a calendar. And people are like, well, I can't be bothered to do that. Well, fine, don't start a business, don't meet a partner, and get stuck into your nine to five for the rest of your life, or change. What do you want to do? So welcome back, Ksenia. We've got Ksenia with us again today. I've loved the episodes we've done so so far. They've been loads of fun, really, really enjoyable. And I think it's been really good, the different topics that we've been discussing. Got another great one today, which is can you really have it all? Obviously, I'm training business owners and entrepreneurs uh, constantly and in the masses. And, and some of them have amazing relationships. Some of them don't have relationships. Some of them are single. Uh, some of them have different things going on in their life. And, and you're obviously coaching and training people on how to find their dream partners, uh, how to date better, how to meet the right people in your matchmaking as well. So I think this is going to be a really, really good episode. I know you've got some questions for me um, that we're going to we're going to discuss. So should we jump right in? Yeah. Um, thank you so much for inviting me once again. And the really interesting topic because I work with uh, I work with successful people because matchmaking is a luxury and to pay for matchmaker, you have to have money. And many of my clients they are business owners, males and females. And many of them, they say, I have no time for dating. Mm. So they are quite successful in their business. I don't know, it's it's always uh, the question, what do you understand under, under success? Money on being busy, it's d- d- uh, another question. But they cannot find the right person because they think they have no time for it. Yeah. What do you think about it? Because you are a successful businessman yeah. and you are in a relationship and you have a child. Yeah. Is it possible? Is it really possible to have it all, to find time for everything? Uh, it really is possible to have it all. Having it all at once is perhaps a different conversation. So what we need to talk about and probably unpack, unpick is you know the structure of that. I think the first part of your question around time is an important one. Uh, look, we all have the only thing in in life that is equal is the amount of time we have uh, during a day. Now, not the amount of time you have during a lifetime, because some people live to be 100 and some people, unfortunately, don't. Right. So that is an equal. But the 24 hours in a day we all have are, are common. And there are people business owners, non-business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, people that are in show business, in whatever, in all different walks of life that achieve a lot during their day. And there are people that don't achieve very much. Uh, and a high achiever versus a low achiever typically will use their time better. So when somebody says, I haven't got the time for anything, it's usually an excuse in some way, shape or form. It means that you're not making the time for the thing that we are discussing. Uh, and, and often I've, I've done this at events many, many a time where I've turned around and I've said, hey, uh, um, someone says, like, I don't have the time. And I was like, hey, have you managed to watch uh, uh, Netflix recently? There was this uh, cool series on with, you know, whatever the series is at the time. I, I, I remember the one, I had a big room in here, actually. We have 50 people in here. And I'm like, hey, how many of you watched uh, Baby Reindeer? Raise your hand if you have. And every single person in the room put their hand up. And I said, well, hang on. I thought you didn't have the time. <laughs> but you, be, you you found nine, ten hours to watch that, didn't you? So it's not about having the time. It is like literally making some people is, is making the time, deploying the time, and using the time in, in the right way. I personally believe that you can have a really good relationship and still be a business owner. Um, I, I really do believe that. I, I think that I've run businesses now since 2008. And I've been in, I, I don't think I've, I think maybe for the first six months of running my first ever business, I was single. And then I've had a couple of periods where I've been single for six months or a year. But I've always been in a relationship and I've been running businesses. Now, that doesn't mean I've always done it right, but it does mean I've always been in relationships. You know, I've definitely done it wrong. So in in the early years of running a business, I'll tell you now 
what I do now to try and maintain this. Yeah. Because I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I think I've definitely got a better handle on it now than what I did have when I started. Uh, and when I started off running a business, I probably didn't make the time for the relationships that I was in. And because of that, those relationships, it caused conflict. I would stay at work late, which meant that I would not be spending as much time with the person that I was with that would cause problems, uh, would make them not feel as cared about, no. which then caused conflicts in, in the relationship. I would go to work earlier, which also was an issue. And you then become those passing ships in the night that don't see each other. So I've definitely been that person that has sacrificed relationships for businesses, where a relationship probably would have lasted longer had I not actually been in the business um, because I just spent all my time in the business rather than in the relationship. But now the truth is, I do I regret that? Truth no. is, no, I don't. No. I don't. You because, shouldn't. no, no, I don't. Bec because if this person couldn't keep up with your <laughs> pace, maybe it wasn't the right person. Yeah, it, it was. It was like a test. Yeah, absolutely. And the truth is, that wasn't the right person because if I didn't want to dump what I'm, if I didn't want to say, you know what, I'm going to work on that tomorrow because I need to go and spend time with my partner. They're probably not the right partner and they're probably not the person no, that I was enjoying yeah. spending the time with as much than what I might do now because yeah. I actually enjoy being with my partner and doing things because she's fun, right? And I enjoy having spending time with her and having fun with her, right? So I think that it's a choice. I think that we have to make that choice consciously. And I actually said this on a on a podcast recently that every every single person I know that is successful runs their life by a calendar. They like literally run their, every person I know, and I know loads of people that are really successful, that are millionaires, that are celebrities, that are successful in their businesses, that have just been you know really successful in different areas. They all run their lives from a calendar. And in my calendar, I will put in my calendar the holidays that we're going to have, the time out that we're going to have, you know, in terms of my relationship, when you're talking about personal relationship, as well as the time I have with my son, the relationship, mm -hmm. I, I book that time out of my calendar. And I think that that's something that everybody should look to do. The bottom line is your, your personal relationship is like a, a garden. And if you don't water it and you don't tend to it and you don't take care of it, it's going to die. Right, you know, you want your garden to be flourishing and blossoming and be a nice place. You don't want it to be like plants dying, right? And if you don't go and spend time in your relationship, then that probably is going to be what happens to it. So you've got to make sure you tend to your relationship, you look after it, you spend time on it, and that's definitely something that I do now that I probably didn't do in the past. I think it's a great idea to plan everything in the calendar, even time with children, because most of the time, yeah. especially especially women, uh, women struggle. So she's, yeah. uh, she's trying to run a business, the child comes from the school, mm. and she tries to uh, to jungle between, between he. Yeah. Uh, having lunch, running a business, answering the call. But if the child knows, okay, mom is busy from this time till this time, even if she works at home, that's all. Yeah. Don't open the door. Even don't start conversation. F feed yourself from the fridge and so <laughs> and survive if you can. <laughs> If you can, but uh, yeah, we might we, we might want to water that relationship a little bit more. But <laughs> but we uh, typically, what I would say is this: is is my entire calendar runs around uh, my relationship with my son, so nothing gets booked. He is the first booking. Yeah. In the calendar, every event gets planned around that. Every meeting gets planned around that. He goes in first. Everything else goes in second and third. Right, and that's how, that's why I do it. So Miranda, who plans my personal calendar, my PA, is everything gets planned around my time with Sammy. Yes, because you made another very important task to find the time. You delegated everything you can. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, delegate everything you can, which is another thing that you. Yes, you, another thing. Your time, time. Every, not everyone's in that situation when they can do that, but everybody can have a calendar. I mean, if any was, I tell you what, if anyone were to just take a big lesson out of this podcast yeah. it would be open up your calendar if you haven't and got a calendar and start, planning. start a calendar start planning yeah and start planning your time and start living like literally i can promise you and obviously i know there's lots of different people that listen to this so people that listen to this are really successful there's people that listen to this at the beginning and there's people that listen to this that don't feel successful and say to themselves they're not successful but let me tell you every single person i know that is successful runs their life based on a calendar 
Now you could get your calendar up right now. You can go and get a calendar, whether that be Outlook calendar, you want to get a calendar app and you just start to plan your days and plan your weeks in advance. The more successful you are, the further in advance you are. You're like for example, like my, uh, my entire next year is planned already, right? Like forward planned. Everything is forward planned. Everything's booked out. And they're constantly trying to find spaces to do certain things. And I live my life by the calendar. And I think that that is the big thing that people should do. And what would I say to put in there? Well, put say you've got, uh, let's say that someone's listening to this and they are. Can you can you, can you you give this advice about this uh, 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely do this. Let's say, first of all, we've got a, a personal individual. Let's say someone's listening. Let's say they're 30 years old. They work for someone else. They want to start a business and they're single and they want to go dating. What would my advice be to them? My advice would be start your calendar, put your work out immediately. So this is what I would do if I was that person. I would book eight hours a day out of your calendar for your working time. In your travel time, travel to and travel home, I would put business education, dating education, and then I'd vice versa it on each day. So that meant that they were listening an hour in the morning as they traveled to work about dating and how to get better at dating. They did their day at work and then on the way home, they would listen to business education about how to start a business. And that would be feeding their mind on the two topics they want around their work. Okay. Then what I would calendarize is I'd put an hour in the diary, maybe two evenings a week um, on business education. Like, hey, hey, or business uh, business planning. I'm going to plan my business. I'm going to start this. I'm going to get my website done. I'm going to get my logo done. I'm going to look at my target market. And I'm going to build all these different things out. And then I would probably leave Wednesday and Friday available for date time. Hey, like, you know, I'm going to spend an hour a day on dating apps. And you can put that in. Yeah. And then I'm going to have time free on Wednesdays and Fridays to go dating. And then yeah. I'll put the weekend in. Saturday, you can have complete free time. Okay? And then Sunday, you can have complete free time. But you've got a structured week. Now, that person will become massively more productive. Now, the problem is there'll be people listening going, well, you do that? I actually would do that. Well, that is actually what I would do. And then people are like, well, I can't be bothered to do that. Well, fine. Don't start a business. Don't meet a partner. And get stuck into your nine to five for the rest of your life. Or change. What do you want to do? Now, if you really want to change, then you'll do it. And if you don't want to change, then you won't. And that's okay. But that's the difference between somebody that really wants and goes after their dreams and goals and somebody that doesn't. It's not an accident. Nobody's successful by accident ever. Nobody's ever successful by accident. They are successful by design and by what they travel towards. So if somebody listening, you can't say you've not been told now. That's what I'd say. And another advice I heard it a couple of times about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. So so then let's give the advice then to somebody and now we'll spin it to somebody else. To find to find the time to make uh, to uh, to, yeah. to make the time yeah. happen. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's say that your business let's give this advice to a business owner. No, I think for everybody because for everyone. Uh, how, how to <laughs> because many people say uh, uh, what what I hear from my singles, I would like to to do more exercises but I have no time. I would like to go to the theater more often but I have no time. All this excuse about having no time it doesn't matter yeah. if you're if it's about dating if it's about business it's generally mo- most okay. people so for everyone one of my coaches coach marco um i was how old was i i was probably about 29 i'd got to the point where my business i'd started a business at 25 it'd grown massively it was at that point it was doing about 13 plus million a year um we'd grown to about 70 staff I had about four sites. I was just found out I was going to have a baby. Um, and and literally, I was just manic. And I felt overwhelmed. And I felt like I had no time. And Marco said to me, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get your calendar. And at that point, I wouldn't have got to £13 million a year if I weren't running my life by a calendar. So I had a calendar. So said, what I want you to do now is I want you to print off your calendar every single day, which I did. And he said, for the next 14 days... I want you to take your calendar. Because when you print off, when you look at your Outlook calendar, it's done in 30-minute blocks. So one hour is two 30-minute blocks. And your whole day is running these little blocks, like 30-minute blocks. But you can make those 30-minute blocks 15 minutes, right? So what he said is, what I want you to do, I want you to get your calendar, I want to print it off, and I want you to put it on your desk every single day. And when you go into the business that day, 
I want you to do what's on your calendar, but I want you to write in the available 15-minute segments everything you do 15 minutes a day, every single day for 14 days. You've only got to do it for 14 days. And in 14 days' time, we'll get on another coaching call and we'll analyze what you've done. He said, here's the caveat. No matter what you did in that 15 minutes, whether you went for a walk, whether you looked at Sky Sports for 15 minutes, whether you did absolutely nothing, whether you stared out the window, right? Whatever it is, I want you to write it down. Yeah. And and you've got to have the discipline to write down the different things that you're doing. So I did. And I wrote down, look, I was on Sky Sports for 15 minutes. You know, I watched this. I did that. And very quickly, I realized that I was burning three or four hours a day on nothing from my productivity. And when I went back to that, he said, what have you learned? I said, well, I've learned that I've probably got three, four hours a day that I didn't think I had. And he said, well, how are we going to deploy that three, four hours a day? And then we looked at ways that I could become more productive with that three, four hours a day. And and one of the things, one of my strengths that I would say is I am productive. Um, I don't, I, I yeah. do get stuff done. I'm focused. And, and that definitely is one of my strengths now. And part of that was due to what Marco called. Now, that exercise is something which I've taught to our clients, like Ksenia, as you say, and it's called time blocking. So it's about black blocking the time out of your calendar and really taking a deep dive um, analysis on yourself. And what I would add to that is all successful people, or, or all people, if you're successful, not successful, whatever, have the same time. I gave a on another podcast, I said, if if in the last 20 years, Elon Musk can revolutionize the uh, the payment history of the internet, he can, he can basically create Google Maps via Zip2, which he did. If he can uh, revolutionize the entire car industry and put infrastructure for electric vehicles yeah. all around the world, if he can launch uh, rockets to the moon, if he can start um, open wow. AI and chat GPT, he can do robotics and, and build advanced robots. Right? And he could do that in 20 years. What have you done in the last 20 years? And I think what it shows is that most people no, are, are not using the time that they actually have to do things productive. So, And then I'll give you another one of my mentors, a, a bit of a lesson on time. Is that Sarah always says to me, make sure, she, what she's always said to me, she's amazing and she's, you know, knows how much I appreciate her, is whatever you do, you've got to make sure it's moving the needle, right? So the, so the things that you do have got to move the needle. What that means is, let's say we've got eight hours in a day, it's not about me doing 22 crappy tasks because 22 crappy tasks are, are, are just things day to day that needs to get done. It's like, what are three things that move the needle. And this is actually something that has got me very comfortable and actually much more relaxed with how I use my time. Because I come into work and I'm like, I don't have to do 80 things and make myself busy being busy. What I have to do is one, two or three things that are going to move the needle and actually make a difference to this business or yeah. whatever business in the long term. So it's about identifying what are those needle movers, attacking them and getting them done. So I'll give you an example. Um, the, the podcast always can you have it all oh, well you want a relationship so what's a needle mover on on the relationship well a needle mover would be well you're going to need that profile done online if you've been sitting on it just get it done right because that moves the needle that gets you in the game hey another needle mover would be going out and going on those dates why would that be yeah. a needle mover well because you've got much more ch chance of meeting someone if you're in front of someone yeah. right and another needle mover would be you know uh, f f in your business would be yeah go and register the company register the domain get the website done go out and start networking having conversations doing these different things so make sure the stuff that you do with your time is going to move the needle in the tasks that you do yeah, great. Uh, I have another question, uh, quite personal, maybe. Uh, uh, um, many women, yeah, many women, uh, women mostly, uh, they are obsessed uh, with uh, searching for successful men. Yeah. But as we discussed in a previous uh, episode, that it's not only what I want to find, it's what this person wants to, to be successful in dating. It's not what mm. se sell and buy at the same time. From your personal experience, because you and your friends are successful mostly men from mm. what i saw on the on the reels uh, you post what successful men want to in dating uh that's i think it varies and i think it's different i know what i want um and i th and i do think it varies i think what i definitely value in a person is in terms of somebody that i'd want to go out with which is very different 
and has changed over the years. But what I definitely value now is somebody that's kind, somebody that's giving, somebody that's generous, somebody that's nice. Um, and, and that's what I like personally now. But I've been through the point where I want something that's fiery and dynamic and I want that kind of stuff. I don't want that kind of energy around me now. The kind of energy I want is kind energy, nice energy. And that's what I'm looking for is somebody that's, oh, I'm not looking for it because I've got it. I'm happy with uh, who I'm with and, and she's amazing in that she's kind and generous and giving and loving. And I think that's what you, what I personally want. Now, I think that it's subjective, different people. I've got, I've got friends of mine that, that are successful that they just want somebody that's you know, a 10. Yeah, like, like that. And, and they don't care if that person's personality. Now, I think my, my girlfriend is a 10. I think she's beautiful. She's very beautiful. She's, yeah. yeah, but she's also got, she's also kind. Yeah. And, and for me, that's what makes a difference. And I think that, you know, that's personally what I like. I can't, I can't say I can speak for all successful men. Because I think also I think everybody's different. I do just generally think everybody's different. I will say this is what I've noticed, which I think is really sad. Not sad. What I don't like because I've got I have got a lot of successful fr- friends is that some people think that women want them only for their money, and I actually think that that isn't true. From what I've seen, is that all the all the girls I've been out with, a lot of girls over the years, all the girls I've been out with. I've never really felt like somebody is literally with me for money. They might be with me because they enjoy the lifestyle and they you enjoy can... that type of thing. But I haven't ever had someone ask me for money and go, oh, can you give me this or can you give me that? I've never had someone. Like, that would be a major... I'd just be like, listen, if you want stuff out of life, you get it yourself. But I'm more giving anyway that they wouldn't have to ask that I'd want to give to them anyway. So yeah. it's, it's... But I've never met somebody that's a that, that I would call a money grab or somebody that's I tried c- to... I can explain to you why. Yeah. Because you're not afraid of meeting gold diggers. I'm not. Yeah, but you yeah. know, and men, especially men with money, who are afraid of meeting gold diggers, they meet them because they're afraid of, uh, they are afraid yeah, of I'm them. Yeah, I'm not afraid of it because it is. I would. I'm confident enough to 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 have a conversation about and that say, and say that out. and say no. If, yeah, yeah, Say no exactly, if you don't yeah. if, if you don't like something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's very important not to only get yeses from different people, but you know this. Uh, personal borders and mm. this ability to say no if you don't like something i had a situation couple of, uh, not couple of times mm. constantly men pay for something then they feel uncomfortable because they paid more than they wanted and then they started uh, start complaining and i always say why you didn't say no before you pay it, if you if you know yeah, because it's they're before. not quite worried that they're going to run away, we'll let them run away. Will be my mindset. Yeah, yeah exactly. uh, but See they just pay, pay for for some expensive things <laughs> because they're afraid to lose these women. Yeah, you know it's, it's self confidence and you know so I think generally men who are not afraid of gold diggers like in your situation with uh, self esteem with high self esteem, it's they don't meet such people because I such don't. People. I I, I personally and I also think I I think it's a bit sad that I do know certain men that are like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, but they want, they just want money. or whatever. They just, yeah. Just, yeah, I actually it's, just think like, mate, like, to be honest, there's, there's loads of people who've got more money than you. I'm sure they'd probably target someone else. <laughs> if that's what they're bothered about. It's like some, some people are so obsessed with, with that that is very, very destructive and actually it closes doors. You know what? Take people for who they are. If you don't like them, don't entertain them. And if they do, then do. And it's so being. But you can't sit around, walk around and be be afraid that people are out to get you. It's such a, a poor mindset and a poor frame of reference that it's probably going to hurt you. You know, there's plenty of amazing women out there. There's plenty of amazing men out there. If you haven't find, found the right one, you, you're probably going to have to keep looking and perhaps look in different places, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm on your side. And I try to explain to women that uh, uh, first... Not uh, all men see the money as real success because there is always somebody who there has is. more money. Mo- exactly. Uh, Elon Musk, you know. So. Exactly. Yeah. I do all right, but then there's people that have got 180-foot yachts out there. So, you know, they're probably, if they're a gold digger, they'd probably be better off shooting for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, so, like, do you know what I mean? So, it, so, uh, so, <laughs> so you have to say, so, sorry, love, I am mm. not good much for gold diggers. I have not enough money. Yeah. So, so search, for, <laughs> search for somebody who is more who is richer than than yeah. I am. I, I I don't have yeah. enough. Yeah. Oh, it's was really interesting conversation because uh, you know 
But I, what you said that uh, you feel sad about people who est- uh, estimate each other only in terms of money, and I feel really sad. Uh, I, I also feel sad about this man who um, think or afraid of women wanting their money only. But mm. there is a, 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 some psychological oh. thing that yeah. men who say that women want mm. money only, they sell, see themselves only as men, uh, a yeah. money provider. Yeah, they exactly. don't, don't, don't have own values or they still think they don't have values. I think it's perfectly natural for women to want to be with a man that's ambitious and successful and have and money that has a good lifestyle and, have and money. that can afford to provide. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely and, not. Um, you know, I think that as, as long as it's a two-way street and they bring great things to the relationship, then I think that's a really good thing. And if and if someone is like that and they get a great lifestyle and they're very caring and kind, which I said, which I yeah. mentioned was important, then I think that's a great match. You know, you've got a caring, kind, loving person with somebody that is going to look after them and they're going to have a great relationship together. I think that's amazing. Uh, the problem in the breakdown is, is if that person that wants a great lifestyle, that wants to uh, do all these great things, and have all these great things but doesn't care about the man they're with and isn't kind and isn't generous well then that's the wrong kind of woman and the man has to be strong enough to go you're not the right type of woman for me thank you so much for your time thank you for thank you so much for your time yeah goodbye goodbye but you know i think this is this is uh, the uh, crucial <laughs> thing about <laughs> about dating that many people they cannot say goodbye yeah or uh, what what i teach my clients i always say don't think that uh, any relationship is forever because it will end it one day <laughs> one of us one of us will die <laughs> or we'll 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 uh, split our we finish our relationship so it's not forever it's for today like you said about business you know mm. business it's about today or our life it's about today mm. not about the past not about the future don't plan too much in the future because it's happening today and all relationship will end one day yeah said 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 at uh, very sad you end of it a, end yeah. Of a, yeah yeah enjoy enjoy the moment what's happening right now yeah and and actually to be fair that's quite a, you should enjoy the moment if you're not enjoying the moment and enjoying what you're doing right now then you have to ask yourself like what, what I do, doing? What am I doing? What yeah. I doing? What I doing? Yeah. Mm. What I doing in terms of business, in terms of relationship, friendship, mm. kids, and so on, and so on, and so on. A lot of our position in life. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you so, so I think the answer to that one: Can you have it all? Yeah. If you make the time, you organise yourself, you do the right things, then you can have it all. Hopefully, you've enjoyed that episode. Because anyhow, you've been amazing. I've loved having you on again. Uh, hasn't she been incredible? If you really enjoyed the questions, if you enjoyed the topic. Tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. I think hopefully you'll find this really, really useful in terms of building your business, your life, because this is about business, but it's also about living an amazing life. So if you've enjoyed, please tell us in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you on another episode of Business Growth Secrets very, very soon. 